At the peak of their career, Siegfried and Roy were once asked how it felt to get a standing ovation every night. And Roy's answer was, I don't know. Siegfried gets all the applause. I'm never there because I have disappeared. That stuck with me. A magician who doesn't make things disappear, but disappears himself. Okay, my grandma also used to say I have to go disappear when she had to use the bathroom. So maybe Roy was just off to the toilet during the applause. But what does it mean anyway? Disappeared, gone. Where are you then? How are you then? Is there still a you at all? I mean, once you have disappeared, chances for you to come back are disappearingly small. I believe that is the disturbing part of the thought. Does disappeared mean I don't exist anymore? And if I don't exist, does that mean I'm dead? Because there is a difference. I, for example, didn't exist before either. Pretty much from the Big Bang till the 26th of February 1971. That's 13.8 billion years and honestly made no difference to me. Meteorite impact, extinction of the dinosaurs, easy going and nothingness for me. And when the Nazis wanted me to go to war, I just said, sorry, I don't exist. So I really can't say anything negative about not existing. Being dead, on the other hand, that's something I haven't experienced yet. Maybe we just disappear into a parallel universe. Physicists believe there's an infinite number of those and everything that can be imagined exists in some universe. That means somewhere every woman marries the man of her dreams, according to the physicists. Fun fact, all of them live in universes in which no woman wants to marry them ever. Anyway, I noticed that we, the magicians, have basically all disappeared. It's just that often we don't realize it. It's the same as in Kafka's Metamorphosis. One day you start to practice card tricks and suddenly the other day you wake up and boom, are you no longer human, but a magician. And you can notice the difference because nobody is asking you questions anymore like, how are you? Or how are the kids? Instead, you get questions like, can you make a beer appear? Can you make a beer appear? What kind of question is that? I never heard of a story where the fairy says, you have three wishes. And the guy says, um, three beers. And this happens all the time. Can you make my wife disappear? <laughs> yes, I can, but I don't like to. I always feel it's a bit embarrassing for the guys when I take off with their wives, but their faces are worth it. And at least I don't have to disappear all by myself. I don't know either how magicians disappear as a person, but at least I know where. Not through the trapdoor or in any secret compartment, no. Behind their tricks. I mean, of course, I stand behind my tricks too, but that also means my tricks stand between me and the audience. I guess ultimately it's a question of transcendence. I need to transcend the trick as a person. And how can I do that? Through humor. The comic exposes his flaws and weaknesses so people can connect and identify with him. The magician is hiding behind his trick because he wants to conceal his weaknesses. But underneath he plays Superman. But being superhuman also means not to be human. People who pretend to have superpowers are ridiculous. They don't fool the audience, they make a fool out of themselves. Especially when they use their powers to make a silk handkerchief appear. Or a beer. Only humor saves the magician from disappearing as a person. Maybe we should start to make beer appear after all. After all, we don't want to be inhuman. Cheers.